Arsenal-Manchester United was one of the best Premier League games of the season so far. There was loads to enjoy in the game. But one thing that stood out to me was a really small detail. It was this. There's Andrea Martinez, one of the Manchester United centre-backs, playing the ball back to David De Gea from a goal kick rather than the other way around. You might expect David De Gea to be playing the ball to Martinez. It doesn't seem as though you're getting any benefit from playing the ball about five feet. And this wasn't the only time that happened in the game. So that was in the very opening stages of the game. This is now later on in the game. And again, Lisandro Martinez playing the ball back to David De Gea. So why is this the case? Well, to understand this properly, we need to talk about one of my favorite things, pressing. Now, when a team are trying to build up the ball from the back, one of the best ways that you can disrupt them before they've really got the ball under settled possession is you can press them really high. This is what's happening a lot. Arsenal likes to do a high press in certain situations against teams that they think might struggle in those scenarios, and they did that against Manchester United. And the best way of doing that is just by pushing your players up high, going player for player as much as possible to make it almost impossible for the opposition to actually get their foot on the ball, settle the ball down, get the ball under possession and build up from the back. Now this is obviously a really risky way of playing because you're pushing all of your team forward to try and cause the opposition problems. You're leaving a lot of space at the back. So if the opposition break the press, then they can get forward quite quickly and often expose a lot of space. But it's not just the vertical space which is an issue here. Also the horizontal space is an issue as well, which is why you'll often see teams forming a flat back four because it just gives you a lot of space for the opposition to cover. Now the way that most high pressing teams like to deal with that is by making the space that they're covering a lot smaller. How might you do that? Well, most high pressing teams are gonna try and split the pitch in half and then force the team who are building up to go one way or the other. If that happens, what they're gonna try and do is keep the ball on that side of the field. So what you'll often see is the striker making a curved run in here, stopping the easy ball back to the other side. And then you can go player to player across the field here and it's very hard to build up. It doesn't matter so much about players on this side of the field because if you make it hard to get the ball back across, then you don't need to worry about marking them too tightly. And this is what Arsenal like to do. Now, the more eagle-eyed among you will look at this pitch and actually notice that if the ball goes the other side for Arsenal, there's a slight problem, and that is that they don't go player for player entirely on this side of the pitch. Because Bukayo Saka is playing a hybrid role here, he is responsible for covering Lisandro Martinez and Luke Shaw at the same time. So how do they deal with it when the opposition try and build up down that side? Well, let's imagine that David De Gea plays the ball to Lisandro Martinez here. That is going to be a trigger for Bukayo Saka to press him. Now that is leaving Luke Shaw free, which is a problem, but the way that Arsenal deal with that is they have a series of jumps where players will move from one player onto another. So if the ball goes to Martinez, Saka jumps onto Martinez. White is gonna jump up to Shaw, so the fullback in this situation. He's obviously leaving Rashford behind, and so Saliba is gonna come across here and press. Now obviously you're leaving yourself a little bit exposed here. You've got your center back up against the center forward in a 1v1 duel, before it was 2v1 when it goes on this side. But the idea is, is that if you can cause problems in the buildup, the opposition won't be able to play the pass well enough for this to be a problem. Well, that's all very good in theory, but how does it look in practice? Well, let's go back to that buildup we saw before with Martinez passing the ball back to David De Gea. When the ball goes back to De Gea, we can see that's gonna trigger the Arsenal press. So what we're gonna see is we're gonna see Eddie Nketiah here making a curved run in here, trying to force the ball over to the left-hand side of Manchester United's field. And he's gonna close that passing lane back between the two centre-backs to cause problems here. Now we can see across the pitch, a number of interesting things. First one is Bakaya Saka in that hybrid role. So he's responsible for Martinez, but he's also responsible for Luke Shaw over here. We've got Martinelli as well. And in this situation, he has to be aware of uh, Aaron Wan-Bissaka here because if the ball does come this way he's going to have to go player for player here and Eddie Nketiah would then close on the other side but the ball does go towards the left back and Luke Shaw and as we can see player for player across the field and that starts the jump so because the ball has gone across to the left hand side Saka has to push onto Martinez this allows Tommy Asu here the fullback to jump onto Luke Shaw you can see here that Erdogan is on Scott McTominay and by the time the ball arrives at Luke Shaw you can see that everyone is covered player for player. So we've got player covered here by Saka, player covered here by Erdogan. Martinelli is able to come across because as we said, with the ball on the opposite side of the field, it's not so important for him to mark the player man for man. You can see here as well, I think this is Fernandez and Thomas Partey. The only thing that Luke Shaw can do here is play the ball down the field and he ends up losing it. So why then in this high pressing situation are Manchester United getting Lisandro Martinez to take the goal kick and passing it to David De Gea? Well, let's go back to the board and have a think about what happens if David De Gea takes the pass to Lisandro Martinez. As soon as David De Gea plays the ball to Martinez here, he's committing Manchester United to one side of the pitch and he's making Arsenal's decision about how they're gonna press 
for them. Because we know as soon as that ball goes, Saka is going to go, White's going to push up on Shaw, Saliba is going to push up on Rashford, and everyone else is going to fall in behind, and Ketty is going to stop the pass back across. So by passing the ball from De Gea to Martinez, what you're doing is you're making Arsenal's decision for them and giving them the initiative in the pressing moment. Now this is all very theoretical, so let's have a look at how it works itself out in practice. So I've got a game here between Chelsea and Manchester City in the Carabao Cup. I've chosen this for a very specific reason. One is the keeper. The keeper here is going to play the ball out to the centre-back. And two, Manchester City are going to press in a very similar way to the way that Arsenal are at the moment. So let's have a look at what happens when the ball is passed to Koulibaly. As soon as that pass is played, that triggers the Manchester City press. We can see everyone is going for their player. We can see Julian Alvarez here closing down the passing lane to the other side of the field. Everyone else is player for player. Carl Walker is jumping up onto the fullback. And importantly, the Chelsea players are running back as well, which is really bad in a build-up situation because you don't want to be facing back to your own goal. You want to be facing the other way. So you can see Lewis Hall here in a horrible situation. By the time he picks the ball up, you can see that Carl Walker is about to press him. There's no free passes anywhere. He's not going to be able to get the ball to the other side of the field. It it's a mess. So by passing from the goalkeeper to the centre-back, what you've done then is you've given the initiative to the opposition and you end up in this horrible situation. So what difference does it make having the centre-back pass the ball to the goalkeeper then? Well, let's go back to the board and have a look. So let's say that Martinez passes the ball to De Gea here. The difference between what we saw when it happens the other way around is that now Manchester United haven't committed the press for Arsenal one way or the other. There's the option that David De Gea could go one way or he could go the other way. What difference does that make? Well, we've already said that this pass here triggers a series of jumps on this side. If that pass doesn't come in until this point, what we've got here is Manchester United already possessing the ball, but not committing Arsenal one way or the other. And what that means is, is that rather than Arsenal having the initiative, now Manchester United have the initiative. So let's have a look at how that looks in practice by going back to the original series of screenshots that we looked at to see how Manchester United are actually taking the initiative in the possession build-up here. So Martinez plays the ball back to De Gea. De Gea has the ball here, but you can see already that there's still a level of uncertainty from Arsenal in the press. Remember, in the Chelsea picture, we saw the ball going one way, that triggered the Manchester City press immediately. In this situation, Arsenal aren't able to commit because the ball could go either way in this situation. So Bakaya Saka can't jump here, and we can't have the jump coming in on this side either. But also, Martinelli over here has got to keep an eye on Aramon Bissaka over here as well. So there's much more uncertainty on the part of Arsenal about which way they're going to press, what the press is going to look like and how quick they can do it. The other thing to note here is that because Martinez has played the ball back to David De Gea, he's now free. So De Gea has the ball and the two centre-backs are free to do what they want. And what we're going to see is he's going to pull out here because he knows that Bakaya Saka is marking him and Luke Shaw. And what that's going to do if we move the play on is that it's going to pull Saka a lot narrower and it's going to give a huge amount of space now around Luke Shaw. And think about the big difference here between where Luke Shaw is going to be receiving the ball and the situation to where Lewis Hall was receiving the ball for Chelsea. Now, as soon as that pass is played, we're seeing Tommy Asu push forward and Arsenal go player for player, Martinelli can come across. But there's so much more control now for Manchester United in this moment. To the extent that by the time the ball arrives at Luke Shaw, he's able to take it under control and give himself the best chance of getting this pass down the field to his teammate. Yes, it is turned over in the end, but there's so much less pressure here compared to what we saw with Lewis Hall in this situation here. So that's why Manchester United are taking goal kicks from their centre-back to their goalkeeper, because when you're playing against a high press like Arsenal's, it just gives you a little bit more initiative in the build-up phase and just makes it much easier for you to move the ball down the field. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.